I take a second just to uh, celebrate something with you all? Uh, last couple of weeks, months-ish, we've been praying for a couple in our church, Danny and Sam, their baby. Walter was born six weeks prematurely. He's been in hospital with uh, breathing complications, and we've been praying that there's healing. And hey, how good uh, this morning that Danny and Walter were able to be here in the service. Come on. How good is our God? How good is it when, when we see a miracle happen? Come on, we don't just talk about the things we pray for. We praise the thing that God answers. So hey, if you've got a miracle you're needing, don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. Don't give up and don't stop praying. And friends, don't stop praying for them. Because come on, a miracle's just around the corner. I love seeing the Holy Spirit move. It is my favorite thing. I love it. And so I'm real keen to speak in this series. We're talking about being spirit-led, uh, which is a great one. And really, it, it's just a, a direct follow-on from Easter. Like we're literally just going straight off the back of Easter because Jesus' last command was to wait for the Holy Spirit. Right before his disciples and his friends could begin the great commission, right? Go out into all the world and preach the gospel. Go out into all the world and lead people towards me to know the Father. Before they could do that, he told them, hey, wait, stop, hold on. You need the Holy Spirit. Don't leave before I give you that thing. I believe before they could do the Great Commission, they needed the great infilling. They needed to be filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit. And even more than that, the the, the people that that took the message of of Jesus, sorry, the early church that took the message of Jesus to the world is they weren't carrying on remembering the name of Jesus as a martyr, right? Or a reminder of, oh, I remember what Jesus did for me, so therefore I should carry this forward. But no, they had the presence of God with them. Jesus promised them an advocate, a helper, saying, you will not be on your own. Come on, how good is that? That God has given us this great task to go out to all the world and reach people, reach our friends, reach our family members. And he says, you aren't going to have to do it on your own. Come on, introverts, how good is that? I'm so thankful because I'm not very good at speaking in my own strength or talking to anyone beyond my wife. So man, I'm so glad that the Holy Spirit is there to help me. So this idea of a spirit-led life has been the call for all of us since day one. Right, that help is there. So that's good. Hey, so we've got to figure this out. So I want to ask us all as we're sort of going to go through a bit of a journey tonight is, are we following? Are we following the Holy Spirit? You in this room, are you following the Holy Spirit where He could be leading you? Geez, maybe a better question. Maybe we've got to take a few steps back and go, do you, do you know the Holy Spirit? Do you know the Holy Spirit? Maybe you know of the Holy Spirit. I know last couple of Sunday nights, we've had some pretty uh, powerful services, right? People coming to the front, getting prayed for, seeing God's power move, which is, which is awesome. And I'm sure many of us have experienced the presence of the Holy Spirit. Again, you felt God move in a church service, you've gone to a grow night or something, and wow, it's cool. Maybe you've had a divine decision in a moment and you just feel that the Holy Spirit has given you wisdom in how to deal with something, how to talk with someone. Maybe you've experienced a miracle. Someone prayed for you and you've been miraculously healed or you prayed for someone and you saw it happen as well. There's a bunch of different ways we can experience the power of the Holy Spirit. When we look through the, the, uh, the, uh, the early church in the book of Acts, right, we see that they experienced the Holy Spirit's power, His wisdom, His guidance, His correction. That one we like less of, but it's, it's pretty important, I think. But see, when this happens and you've had an experience with the Holy Spirit, you, you've, you've had a moment with Him, is we can tend to confine Him to that moment, to that experience, to that feeling. And I, I want us off, off the bat so we don't have... Um, some false hope tonight about where we're going, but it's, I think it's really important that we remember we are not looking tonight or probably for the next few, few weeks, but we are not looking at being spirit-filled. We are not looking at being spirit-experienced. We are being look at, uh, looking at being spirit-led. Come on, it's not just about the encounter. It is not just about the experience. It is about we are being taken to a place. For every single person in this room, come on, I need you to hear this. You are being led by the Holy Spirit, Okay? Everyone, I checked with God before. (laughs) Every single one of you is being led by the Holy Spirit. He has a place for you to go. He has a calling for you. He is wanting you to go somewhere. Okay, no one here, no one in the world is just created to be a bystander and go, I was created to just watch the works of the church. I was created just to enjoy everything that was going on. No, 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 you are all being called. You are all being led. Right? We read the Bible, we see the, the adventures that the power of God leads people on, the, the places they go, the people they would set free. Come on, that is not just for then, that is for now as well. So I think that's why it's really important that we differentiate the being spirit-filled, the experience, that's great, but coming back to, well, no, we are being spirit-led. 
We aren't just boxing him into a moment and a feeling and going, well, that's good when that happens and I feel like this. No, we've got to go back to where is he taking me? Because really the, the feeling, the experience, that only happens when the Holy Spirit is near. It only happens when the Holy Spirit is near. He's not sprinkling dust. It means he's present. It means he's trying to get your attention. I love reading um, through the, the Old Testament. I think Ezekiel is a really great story because he has this amazing encounter with God. And if you read it, like it, it looks like something pretty, pretty weird. And I just love it. it goes through all this crazy stuff, you know, describing like angels and they got, they look terrifying. Like, have you seen like act, what angels would actually look like according to description? Creepy. Anyway, <laughs> is, uh, I just love that there's this big description of stuff. And essentially what happens is Ezekiel is on his face before God, just in awe and wonder, and, and God simply says, stand up, I have something to say to you. It's so important to remember that when God speaks, he's, well, he wants to talk to you. He's not just there to go, ha ha, look at this, how amazing. But he's going, I need your attention because I've given you a job to do. Come on, so let's not just confine the Holy Spirit to a moment. Let's make sure we're listening for what he is telling us to do. So how do we get to the Holy Spirit? Where is he? There, no. <laughs> Sorry, so this is my third time preaching this one, so I'm just like, I'm, I'm going off. <laughs> but we, I, we, we can spend so much time looking for his presence, right? Where is the Holy Spirit? Like, is he, is he at the front? Probably. Is he, see, I'm, I'm really on there tonight. <laughs> is we go, we, we go to the certain conference, we go to the certain small group, the certain leaders, and whatever it is, we, we try and find where is the Holy Spirit? But I've got to tell you tonight that if you are looking for the Holy Spirit, if you want to see the Holy Spirit more in your life, if you want to know where He is, it's time to stop being so concerned about where He is and start looking about where you are. When you get a little bit more concerned with our presence than His presence, instead of being focusing on where He is, start to look where you are. Because again, I look to the, the book of Acts and seeing the disciples as they uh, were with the Holy Spirit. And uh, I'll read it again just to double check, but I'm pretty certain the disciples never had to chase the Holy Spirit. I right? never said they had to climb a certain mountain to encounter the Holy Spirit. Oh, and then we have to go to Ethiopia and then we're going to encounter the Holy Spirit. And then, oh, he's, he's on his tour now. He's back in Jerusalem. We've got to go over there. And oh, now he's in prison. We better go to prison to find the Holy Spirit. No, I'm, I'm pretty certain that the Holy Spirit actually seemed to turn up wherever they were, right? They weren't chasing the Holy Spirit, but wherever they went, the Holy Spirit seemed to follow. He seemed to be moving, right? They were in the upper room. Holy Spirit was there. They were in the streets. Holy Spirit was there. In a prison cell, Holy Spirit was there. Yet I don't know, but sometimes it feels like the Holy Spirit isn't where I am. It doesn't feel like He's always there present with us. So what is it about them that we could be missing? That's what we're going to go through tonight. Because I believe we, limit, we can limit God to a certain level of presence that we're comfortable with. Right? This is sort of the big one. Is Again, we, we, we get in this, this place where we go the... Wherever his presence is, wherever my presence is, well, I'm sort of okay with that. So I'm just going to keep it where it is. And it creates this self-defeating cycle of, well, the Holy Spirit is distant, so so is my position. Right? We go, oh, I'm not really encountering the Holy Spirit in worship, so I'm not going to engage very much. So I'm not going to encounter the Holy Spirit very much because I'm not engaging very much. So I'm not going to encounter the Holy Spirit very much because I'm not engaging. And we're just stuck in this self-defeating cycle of you stay over there, I stay over here, and I don't really need to do as much. Again, I'm not going to pray very passionately because I'm not seeing the Holy Spirit move. I'm not going to pray very passionately because I'm not seeing the Holy Spirit move. And it just goes on and on and on, right? It's the problem is this self-defeating cycle of not being Spirit-led, but being Spirit-less. But the flip side for this, of course, if that's the case, then it means that the more we lean in, the greater the response will be. The more we lean into someone or something, the greater the response back will be. So that means that the more we lean into the Holy Spirit, the more we will see of Him. Now, it does command more effort. It does mean you have to do a lot more, but what you get back is even greater. When there is a different level of presence that we can have. It's not just the Holy Spirit is here, but what level of presence is this? What, what level of presence am I? Because you can sit in a church service and then you can be in a church service, right? You've been there before, right? Where it can be one person on the other side of the room, one on the other, and go, wow, God, move, that was powerful. And everyone, someone else could be, that yeah, was all right. Because it's all about where we're standing in this. Think about, like, I, I could have a presence with, um, with Lockie, right? We're in the same room right now. He's, he's sitting in the crowd. Or if I wanted to connect with Lockie, 
uh, I, I could give them a phone call, right? Now, I don't know about you, but phone calls are a very low level of engagement. Maybe this is just it for me, because I'm talking to someone on the phone, I can just be sitting there and, you know, I can, I can call them and they can probably talk, but I'm just scrolling on my phone. I could be on Instagram and, um, oh, hey, man. How are you? Cool. I'll probably talk later. Just got someone being real rude in church on their phone. <laughs> so, um, yeah, thanks. Okay. <laughs> See, I can, I can talk to Lockie on the phone and there's a level of presence there. But again, I'm not very engaged. I'm scrolling on Twitter. Or I'm probably watching TV in the background. Like, and he doesn't know. But I'm not getting much out of it, right? But all of a sudden, if I go to meet Lockie in person and I go talk to him and I'm like, hey, mate, how are you? Like, good to see you fantastic, and we sit down for a coffee and we're just hanging out. Now, all of a sudden, I can't just sit here and go, uh, yeah, tell me about, yep, yeah, how's life going? How's the bagel bar? Fantastic. And I'm just on my phone. I'm a bit bored. I'm distracted. Oh, Andre's next to me. I'll just talk to Andre instead. Like, that's not, I can't do that, can I? But I'm in person, so I've got to, I've got to look at Lockie and his amazing brown eyes. And blue? I'm colorblind. That's fine. <laughs> and I've got to engage. I've got to lean in. I've got to ask different questions. But also, I'm going to get so much more out of that conversation than by not engaging. See, how much we engage, how much you engage, depends how much you get out of it. And it does mean more effort on your part, but man, it it means you will get something much greater from it. So, for a minute, come on, this is why we encourage you to engage at church. Okay, I, I've got to say, listen, it, the, the reason we, the singers at the front say, lift your hands, the reason we say, sing out loud, the reason we say, hey, when you hear a good point from Matty hosting or someone's preaching, give a little amen, give a little clap. Thank you. Thanks, man. It, it is not for us. It is not for me. It's like, I don't need it to be a better preacher. I don't need it to feel better about myself. Uh, I've spent a lot of the last few years preaching to high schoolers. You guys are all right. It's good. Thank you. But I also preach to high schoolers at school where they have to be, <laughs> forced to be there. And man, I can tell you there's been plenty of silent services, plenty of grade 12s just like literally. It's okay. I've, I've, I can do it. It's okay. My, my ego is not that fragile. It is not for me. It is for you. Because when you start to lift your hands and actually go, I am giving this problem to God. When you start to lift your hands and go, I am praising my Saviour. Actually, yeah, hallelujah. You are pressing into God so much more and you will receive something far greater back. Again, when you hear a good point, when you hear something that is just good to agree with, it's not again for me, it's for you going, oh, that is a good point. Man, I should remember that more. It, just, it actually helps you engage in these things. So come on, church, I want to make sure that we are engaging with the Holy Spirit. We're not just sitting in a church service going, that was nice and great. Come on, we want to see a move of God. I want to see this next generation coming through, not come to a Sunday at church and go, oh, so we don't do the the passionate thing. Come on, I want them to come to Sunday and go, oh, youth sucks. Like the, the passion is on a Sunday. The passion is on a Sunday night. So church, young adults, families, come on, for everyone coming through, let's show them how much we love Jesus. Let's show people that actually I engage with my Saviour, not just sit back and, and wait, maybe to receive. We're going to change our position because it's a reflection of the inside. Because we are a spirit-led church. That is who we are. That is where we are going. So let's put ourselves in that position. Now, again, you're going, oh, but Ben, I don't like doing those things. That's not comfortable. I don't, I don't, I don't always like to have to point to this one. But you're going, come on, not my will, but yours. Not my will, but yours. Holy Spirit, what is your will? If we want to start finding out where the Holy Spirit is and going, well, I want to be wherever I am, the Holy Spirit's going to be there. Maybe we have to look at what pleases the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit's will? And tonight, in the last 15 and 23 seconds, I want to address that and just keep it real simple. With this one question, what position do I need to be in to experience greater intimacy with the Holy Spirit? What position do I have to be in to experience greater intimacy with the Holy Spirit? Now, I've already talked for a second and ranted on the position in here, but it's, again, the main thing is going to be the position out there, right? As you're going about your life, as you're at work, you're at home, you're at uni, you're at whatever, because remember, the Spirit will lead you out there. Let's remember Acts 1.8, Jesus is, again, what I said, that last command, says this, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit's come upon you and you'll be my witnesses. It's in the title, right? You will be a witness out there to the lives around you. So we know that's the case. So let's figure it out then. Okay, so what pleases the Holy Spirit? What position do we need to get into? I want to look at one key bit of scripture tonight uh, because I don't believe this has to be complicated. 
This is not a, like we, we dove through the, the secret section in the Bible. If you read it upside down and we found the key, it's actually pretty simple because it turns out God wants to, he wants, to, he, wants to be, he wants us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. He gave us it for a reason. So I want to look at one bit of key scripture that I think gives us a key, some keys on how to have that greater intimacy with the Holy Spirit, how to know what pleases Him so that no matter where you are, come on, He's going to be there. So we're going to read in Colossians 1. It says, uh, Paul's sort of instructions to the church of the Colossians at the time, and this was his prayer for them to be spirit-led. It says this, For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of His will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please Him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all the power according to His glorious might, so that you might have great endurance, patience, Give joyful thanks to the Father. There's a key there I've highlighted, it, so it's, not, it's a bit of a giveaway. It's like, did you catch it? It's an orange. Verse 10, so that you may live worthily of the Lord and please Him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good deed, growing in the knowledge of God. That right there, that right there is the position that pleases the Holy Spirit. That's what we need to do. So I want to break it down to show us some things that we can, again, live like that to the Holy Spirit. We'll be where we are, so that he, we will be led by Him. Come on, we're going to see our worlds change, so we can be led by the Spirit powerfully and effectively in our daily lives. So the first key is how we live. We see at the very start there, Paul says, that we may live. Now, the word may live uh, in, in the Greek is this word parapateo, and this one's pretty simple. This is a dictionary.com sort of definition vibe. It's to walk, live, conduct one's life, right? That, that's pretty, pretty simple, right? Oh, the way I live, everything I do as I'm going about, yep, fantastic. But there's the, the noun version of that that uh, Paul uses, and it was something that the, the Colossians would have understood, and it's the, the noun word is uh, parapatetic, which refers to the, the philosophy and teaching of a guy called Aristotle, right? A, a Greek philosopher, a a lot of people, you probably know him from some form of study or whatever. But what this guy did is, uh, he, and a lot of people following him after is, uh, it says he conducted discussions while walking about in ancient Athens, right? So it wasn't a sit down, let's learn, classroom, all right, 101, fantastic, 102, fantastic. But as, as we're walking around, as we're going about, hey, let's look at this example. Hey, what do you guys think about this? Hey, this is a perfect example to use. And as he's going, he would be teaching. And Paul is getting this across is that, uh, that we may live. So the way we live is as we're going, right? As we're not sitting down to come on one moment to learn about the Holy Spirit, fantastic, all right, now I'm gonna go out. But it's every little moment of our life we can and should be including the Holy Spirit. We've got to live in a posture of communication with the Holy Spirit. Because a great way to learn someone's voice is to talk to them. And that statement's not as eloquent as Aristotle would put it, but I think that sort of gets it a bit clearer. It is you can't hear the Holy Spirit if you never talk to Him. So the idea is that as you live, as you're going about your day, it's just the just little flexes of the Holy Spirit. As you're going to work, Holy Spirit, help me today. As you're going into a hard conversation, Holy Spirit, give me the confidence, give me the wisdom, give me the peace to talk about this. As you're with your family or your friends that don't know Jesus and you want to see salvation or healing in their life, it's Holy Spirit, do something powerful. Come on, this is where we get to experience those fruits of the Holy Spirit. We start to dabble in them. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. And... But you know the, the thing that I think we forget a lot? It's fruit of the what? Fruit of the Spirit. Yet so often it's, oh, I've got to muster up the courage for this conversation. Ooh, I've got to watch some TED Talks, right? It's the, oh, I'm feeling really anxious. Oh, I, I better download my breathing app. I need to take some time, have some chamomile tea. Mmm, fantastic. That's the fruit of me, right? That's me just trying to muster this up. And, and it's all fine to do, but again, that's... Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit for a reason, not just to clap us on from the sideline, but go, I am your advocate. I am your helper. I am your comfort. Call on me. Fruit of the Spirit. I don't need more of my self-control. It sucks. I don't need more of my patience. I'm not very patient. I need patience from on high. Come on, I need self-control from on high. I need wisdom out of my own understanding. I don't need joy just because I feel it. No, I need joy from God, from the Holy Spirit. We can't neglect the fruits of the Holy Spirit. We've got to start encouraging them, engaging in them, looking for those moments. Everywhere we go, as I live, 
I'm always just, just slightly talking to the Holy Spirit, starting to invite him in, starting to experience those fruits. So that's the first key, as we live. Second key is about where you are going. Because the next part of that scripture says that we please him in all respects. And that means to walk with a view that is pleasing to him. And that's sort of the, the, the key there that I want to focus on. Is it's not just about pleasing God where we've been, but it's about pleasing God where we are going to. Where, where are you going in life? Do you have direction? Do you have things you want to see? Do you have desires? Do you have a heart for the lost? Do, do, you, do you feel like God could use you in a situation? Or maybe the other way around is, do you feel like you need God in the situation you're going to? Because again, it's the fruit in my, myself of going, oh, like I can do that on my own. Like I can muster up the courage. It's the same thing. If, are you going towards situations of, man, I could not do that on my own. Again, like, I'm not great. I don't like talking to many people. It's, okay, so I'm called to go out and reach the lost. So oh, Holy Spirit, give me the courage. All right, well, if I'm going to go talk to that person, I need you, Holy Spirit. Well, if I'm going to lay hands and pray for someone, I need you, Holy Spirit. Right, if I'm going to give someone wisdom and I don't have much expertise in the area, I'm going to need your wisdom, Holy Spirit. It's about where you are going, that we are going to places that invites adventure, that invites challenge, that invites uncomfortableness because that's where the Holy Spirit wants us. Come on, what opportunities are you giving him? Or is there none? Or is it just, oh, like, yeah, you can do it on your own. You know, going, I, if I'm going to go there, if I'm going to see that happen, if I'm going to see those lives change, I cannot do it without the Holy Spirit. Because all of a sudden, if, if we're just comfortable in life, if it doesn't really matter about the direction we're going, we don't really have those, those big God dreams in our heart, is where we're sort of treating the Holy Spirit like maps, but you, know, you, you, you plug it in the car and you just sort of hit home or work. Oh, uh, yeah, GPS home. And you, you know where you live. It's there. You're not really paying attention. Like, yeah, okay, sweet. But man, anyway, when you're going to somewhere 40 hours north of Coolangatta, you're like, man, I need maps to tell me where to go. Like, I don't want to get stuck on the highway. I don't want to miss a turn. I'm paying attention. I'm leaning in. I'm engaged to what is being spoken about. Right, I'm not just leaning back going, I'll just stick on Hume Street, I should get home. I know the way. Like, you know, those moments you're driving, you sort of go, huh, I wasn't paying attention for the last two minutes. Come on, I think that's so much like our spiritual life where we don't have that direction. We need to be engaged and leaning in, which means, again, less of my will, more of his. Come on, are you getting into the lives of your unsaved friends? Not sitting on the outside anymore, but going, actually, I'm gonna try and invest in this friendship so I can see them saved because they need Jesus. Right? Is it maybe time to step into some friendships at the office? Instead of just, yeah, I work nine to five, this supports the family, fantastic. But oh, maybe God's actually called me here for a reason. Maybe he's got me here for a purpose. Maybe I could do more than just work. Maybe God's actually got me here to help someone. Maybe it's time to take the headphones out at gym. Okay, Holy Spirit, maybe I should talk to someone. To the danger of having no direction but wanting power, it, it can turn us into a fanatic. You all know what a, what a fanatic is, a bit of a crazy person. And I love there's a, this theologian, R.C. Sproul. He puts it like this. A fanatic is a person who, having lost sight of his goal, redoubles his effort to get there. The fanatic runs around frantically getting nowhere. He's a basketball player without a basket, a tennis player without a net, a golfer without a green. You've got to know where you're going. You've got to know where you want to see the Holy Spirit move. You can just be walking around, oh, I've got my hands raised in church. Jesus, I need you, great. But then it's, oh, I don't actually need you. I don't really know where I'm going. I don't know what I want the Holy Spirit to do. I'm just sort of walking around and maybe something cool will happen. Come on, let's take some direction. Let's take some initiative and go, Holy Spirit, I wanna go into some places, some scary places, some uncomfortable places and see you move. I don't wanna be someone who just chases the power, but then has nothing to do with it. I wanna be in a place where I'm gonna see the Holy Spirit move. Come on, because we need to have an end in mind. And there is an end in mind. Exactly how I started it. The Spirit is leading you somewhere. He is. He is. The Holy Spirit is leading you somewhere. He's trying to get your attention. For some of you, it's a tap on the shoulder. For some of you, it might be a slap on the face. He is trying to get your attention, saying, come on, I'm calling you. What I love about this is, again, we look at the idea of the Great Commission. Right? That Jesus said, go about into all the world, reach the lost, lead them towards me. 
And I think we can overlook, we can gloss over that sometimes that, that Jesus has given us the most valuable job in the world to look after the most precious resource in His eyes. Right, when we say yes to following Him, He doesn't say, fantastic, here's some gloves, here's a broom, just gonna do some cleaning up, you're gonna wash the dishes. No, no, He goes, the thing I value the most, humanity's soul, I'm entrusting you to be the one to spread this message. So this is not a light task when the Holy Spirit is calling you to influence this world, to change the lives of people. It is not just a small little, oh, I guess I'll get to it. God has entrusted you with His most valuable, precious resource. So no wonder He says, here's the Holy Spirit. Here's the Holy Spirit. You don't have to do it alone. You don't have to do it in your own strength. You don't have to do it in your own fruit. So do we go forward or do we stay back? I'll wait till I see something before I engage. And I'll lean back because I'm not seeing it. I'll lean back because I'm not feeling it. I'll lean, no, no. Come on, let's break the cycle. Going, you know what? Holy Spirit, lead me. Holy Spirit, show me where you're wanting me to go. Holy Spirit, show me who you are wanting me to be. Holy Spirit, reveal in me the things that need to change. Not for my will, but for yours. Come on, Holy Spirit, what pleases you? Because that's who I want to be. That's where I want to be. You know, there's that one last word that in Colossians 1.10 where it says, I want to please Him in all respects. That word please, uh, in Greek is aresko. It talks about our attitude. Come on, if you haven't picked it up yet, it's all about the heart. What is your posture in here? What is your posture in here? Are you leaning in? Are you pressing in? Are you... But again, I, I love the illustration of raising our hands in worship. It, it, I don't know, there's so, there's so many things. I like to teach our high schoolers to, to give them an example. It's the, imagine you're holding up something you're giving to God. Imagine you're reaching out for Him. But I also love that. Man, what a vulnerable position. What a vulnerable position it is. Let's go, Holy Spirit, I, I'm being vulnerable for You. Do what You need to do. Holy Spirit, I will be again who You need me to be. Because I've got an attitude of not my will, but yours. An attitude of spirit, lead me. Not, now oh, I'll walk around with you and maybe something will happen. Come on, because the world doesn't need a, a passive Christian. Gone are the days of passive Christianity. Come on, turn on the news or chat to your Snapchat AI and man, you will see how dark the world is at the moment. You will see how depressing it is out there. You know the things that people are going through and passive Christianity is not the answer. Spirit-led Christianity is. Spirit-filled Christianity is. Your, your parents or your family or your friends don't need a, an explanation. They're not gonna be convinced, but they need to see someone who is 100% sold out, 100% convinced, 100% not in their own ability. Like, man, what, what's changed about you? How are you like this now? Hey, what, what is there something about you that I can't? It's the Holy Spirit. I am being Spirit-led. And man, if I get spirit filled, fantastic. I'm gonna get spirit experiences, fantastic. But I know then that it's not a once off. Come on, my prayer for you church is that we're not coming back to the Holy Spirit to get filled because we've just leaked and we're empty. Is that we come back to God all the time to get filled with the Holy Spirit because we've been using Him, because we've been working with Him. And then just like the early disciples, just like the early church, as they're going around, the Holy Spirit seems to be following them. Come on, let's see the Holy Spirit more at UQ Gatton. Let's see the Holy Spirit more at our, our USQ as you guys are doing the work out there on Red Frogs. Let's see the Holy Spirit more at our schools and our high schools. Come on. It's time to stop holding back. It's time to stop resisting. It's time to stop that self-defeating cycle and go, you know what? I'm all in. You know what? I step in. Holy Spirit, have your way. Come on, church, why don't we pray? Jesus, I thank you so much that you, you didn't, one, you didn't give us a menial task. You're not condescending like that. No, you actually believe in us. You actually love us. You actually created us. And you said, go about the world and reach the people that I want the most. Because He died for all of us. He died for all humanity, not a select few. And He gave the Holy Spirit to everyone, not a select few. So Holy Spirit, I just pray over these next week, however long. If there's people here that have been in that self-defeating cycle of pushing back, 
Come on, stir them. Stir them to lean into you, to press into you. Help us that as we live, as we walk along life, that we're constantly going, I wanna see the fruits of the Spirit. And that we're walking towards a direction, that we've got a heart to see the lost saved. We've got a heart to see people healed. We've got a heart to, to speak with authority. The same authority that rose Christ from the grave is in us. So God, I thank You. We are not doing this alone. Come on, you're not doing this alone. Just quickly as I wanna pray for two groups of people. Firstly, maybe you've never done a life with Jesus. You, you didn't know He died for you. You didn't know He paid the price for your, your sin, your mistake. And you've been stuck in that place of shame and regret and going, oh, I'm just not as good as that. I'm not, I can't do this. I could never do. Come on, Jesus died for you. And He's entrusted you again with that valuable, precious resource. He trusts you. Do you trust Him? Do you need to give your life to Him? Say, not my will, but yours. It's tonight you need to make that decision, maybe for the first time. I wanna give you that opportunity. I wanna pray for you. So if that's you, if you need to say, Jesus, I need to accept you as my Lord and my Saviour. I need to follow you. I wanna follow your ways. Come on, if that is anyone tonight, just pop up your hand for a wave so I know who to pray for. That is awesome. Come on, that is so brave. Thank you so much. Is there anyone else who needs to make that decision? One person tonight, one person this morning. Come on. Awesome. Hey, I'm gonna pray for you in a second, but one, oh, and you at the back as well. I see that, mate. One last one. I really just felt stirred before about that, that position of vulnerability. I feel there's some people that are just quite closed off to the Holy Spirit and you're scared, which is okay. So I'm not, I'm not gonna make you stand and you know, put your hands up. But if you are struggling with that, with fear, fear of trusting the Holy Spirit, fear of stepping out in faith, I just wanna pray for you and bolster your faith. So if that's you, you need some courage, some fruit of the Spirit, not my fruit, not your fruit, fruit of the Spirit. Come on, again, just give me a wave so I know who to pray for. That's awesome. Come on, is there anyone else? Awesome. Come on, Holy Spirit, right now, I just pray you fall on these people. Fill them again, Holy Spirit. Lord, where they've been acting in their own strength, Lord, I thank you that you are our strength. Lord, not their own courage, not their own understanding, but yours, Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray they start to hear you. They start to just feel that courage rise up inside of them. Lord, like a nervous excitement of what is gonna happen. Come on, open their eyes to the opportunities this week. Lord, I thank you for what you're gonna do. And Lord, for those that made a decision for you, Lord, we celebrate, we thank you. Lord, that they're now entering the kingdom of God. Lord, that they, are, what, they were once dead, now they are alive. Lord, that all their mistakes, their past, their sin, their shame is forgiven. They start a new life now, empowered by you, walking with you. They'll never be alone. So God, we thank you for the gift of salvation that so many others in this room have received. We praise you in the name of God, amen.